there are two kinds of things that they ask us in the questions. One is the rate and one is the yield. In theory questions, as I told you earlier on, always talk about both of these, always touch upon both of these points. But when it comes to these uh, questions like that, know that a forward reaction increases the yield. But uh, like a forward shifted equilibrium increases the yield. And rate of reaction is independent of that. Rate of reaction depends on the five factors and yield depends on three factors. Basically yield is three factors moving forward. And uh, the five factors that we talked about, that is concentration of uh, reactants or products. It could be either way. Uh, that's concentration, temperature, pressure, surface area. Yeah, so five factors that affect the rate of reaction. And then we have uh, three factors out of them that affect the rate of forward reaction or the yield. And they are temperature, pressure, and concentration of particles. Yeah, the four, fifth one was catalyst. So why catalyst is not just for the forward reaction? Because catalyst increases the rate of both the sides. It lowers the activation energy. So both the sides are fast enough. Why doesn't surface area matter for just the forward reaction? Because surface area depends on solids only. And uh, in a reaction vessel, it's unlikely that something can chop the particles into smaller pieces so that they can actually have a higher surface area or a lower surface area. So that is why. And secondly, concentration of a solid remains constant. So that's why it, all, it is also a factor. All right, so what will increase the rate of forward reaction? Which means this question isn't really about uh, rate of reaction. It's basically about yield, right? So let's see. LCP helps us, Le Chatelier's principle, which tells us whatever you do to it, it will equilibrium tries to undo that. So again, that's a very basic. So what will increase the rate of forward reaction? Adding argon to the mixture. What is argon? Argon is a inert gas, which means it doesn't react, which means that all we need to do, uh, all we are getting by adding argon is increase in volume, maybe reduction in pressure, maybe increase in pressure. I don't know. Depends how you add it. And then uh, if they're saying keeping the total volume constant, that means you're just basically adding more gas. You're adding more particles, which should increase the volume. You're not doing that. So definitely either it will spill over and based on ideal gas law, you have volume chain and you're increasing the number of particles. You are going to get either higher pressure or you're going to get lower temperature. So that does not really allow forward reaction to happen that much. Uh, temperature up can increase. Decreasing the temperature will, uh, what it will do is that if you decrease the temperature, the equilibrium will try to increase the temperature and that will drive the reaction forward, right? And uh, that could be a good idea, but then it will decrease the rate as well because decreasing the temperature will reduce the kinetic energy the particles have, which will obviously uh, decrease the rate overall. It will increase the yield, but it will decrease the rate overall. That's also something we don't want. This option is what many students pick on the first glance because they're like, wait a minute, wouldn't decreasing the temperature drive the equilibrium forward? It will, but it will not increase the rate. The key word here is increasing the rate. Then increasing the total pressure by reducing the total volume at constant temperature. So we're keeping the constant temperature. So kinetic energy distribution is saying, we are decreasing the volume, which means in pressure is increased. Pressure is increased. Equilibrium tries to decrease the pre pressure. And that depends on the number of gaseous moles. You have less gaseous moles on the right side. Avogadro's laws tell us that the more gas particles you have, the more the pressure builds up. So because of that, we can say that this is the answer. Okay, It will drive the equilibrium forward, but it will also increase the rate. Removing ammonia, but keeping the total volume of the mixture same. If you remove ammonia, but keep the volume same, that means you have removed the whole gas out of this, which means you have decreased the pressure by keeping the volume same. So yeah, this will decrease the pressure, drive the equilibrium backwards. This is really here. Let's see. Nitric oxide or nitrogen monoxide and bromine vapor react together according to the following equation. Again, we have an equation here, activation energy is given to us. What is the correct reaction pathway for this reaction? Now, here's the thing. There are two signs here that we need to focus on. First one is this negative sign, which means that the reactants are above products. So reactants over it, products niche. And then this positive side, uh, which tells me that activation energy is upwards and it's a small value. This is a large value. This is a small value. 
So based on this, we can clearly see that our answer is going to be D. Yeah, D is the answer that we have. It has both the arrows pointing correctly. Activation energy is always upwards and delta H is always from, it's always pointing towards the product. And uh, D is the one that has that. Okay, all right, moving on. Uh, enzymes are biological catalysts. Many enzymes show- Why not B for the last one? Or B for the last one, let's see. So the problem with B is that delta H is starting from the highest point. Delta H must start at the reactors. Okay, an example of an enzyme which shows specificity is glucokinase. Glucokinase is involved in the metabolism of glucose. Okay, what does specificity mean in this context? People who study bio, help me out. So is it C? Yes, it is C. So just a little bit of idea of, do you guys know the lock and key uh, example that we used to explain uh, enzymes or their working. If you do, can you explain it? Sir, it's basically that the enzyme is the lock and the substrate is the key and uh, an enzyme can only have like a specific substrate that it can act on. So only that key can fit in that lock. So only a particular substrate can fit in a specific enzyme. Excellent. Excellent. So a uh, substrate is the molecule that uh, the enzyme acts on and uh, the shape of these molecules matter. Where does the shape come from? It sh the shape primarily comes from hydrogen bonding in many uh, biological molecules because uh, there's a specific way of folding protein. Folding is a structure of the structure. And uh, the hydrogen bonds play a big role in that. And now because of those shapes, you need uh, enzymes that are specific to those shapes and they can fit in correctly and then either break down that thing or synthesize those things. Though it is either it brings two things together to create a new thing or it can break that thing into multiple parts. So regardless of what it's doing, Catalyst is supposed to work on that one. And enzymes are very specific to what molecules or what kind of substances they work on. And uh, it all has to do with geometry of these molecules. And we analyze that. There's a whole branch of chemistry, which is called analytical chemistry, which deals with analyzing the shapes, the uh, structures of different molecules, and trying to figure out what is best for what purpose and all that. Uh, by the way, I think enzymes were uh, the Nobel Prize for this year or the last year was also for working on enzymes. Uh, something to do with this one, by the way. So yeah, C is the answer because it only operates on a narrow range of substrate molecules that it is specific to those substrate molecules. The diagram shows Boltzmann distribution of energies in one mole of a gas. The gas can take part in a reaction with an activation energy EA, which statement correctly describes the effect of an increase in temperature. So increasing temperature pull, pushes the curve forward. So there's going to be something like this. So the total area remains the same. It touches on a point like this, the higher point goes down and it starts at zero and zero. So those are a few things we need to keep in mind. So the new peak, which is going to be uh, the new peak P, it will be lower. Yes. So it can't be A or B because of that. And more molecules will have energy greater than EA. That is correct because at higher temperature, more particles have higher kinetic energy. So they're going to be towards the right side of EA. So that's our answer. Which change alters the activation energy of a given reaction? Uh, activation energy depend. It's specific to a reaction, and uh, if you have a pathway, that pathway has a fixed activation energy. It does not depend on products. It does not depend on the reactions. So catalyst has the ability to do that. Catalyst pulls the EA downwards because it provides a different pathway, which has a lower activation energy. So is it B? Yes, it is B. Yes, if the temperature of a gas is raised, the maximum of the curve moves to the right. We just did that. Yes, that is the answer. All right, the diagram shows the distribution of molecular energies. The diagram correctly shows the new distribution, which is uncatalyzed and avo catalyst on the So, what shows the correct one with the catalyst? So, is it C? So, the thing with C is that it has lower activation energy and uh, temperature is raised. So, yeah, this is C based on both of these factors. So yeah. why not any of the others? So in A, A doesn't even make sense. A is when you have lower temperature and less particles. Okay. 
and uh, even then it doesn't make sense because i don't know what's happening here why is the curve going down and then going up from the previous curve i don't understand what's happening here and secondly its activation energy with the catalyst is higher than the one without it ye kaisa catalyst hai uh, we do have substances that increase the activation energy we call them inhibitors they are not catalysts they slow down a reaction uh b also has something similar the curve doesn't make any sense you have decreased the temperature but you'll also decrease the number of particles maybe i don't know mm -hmm. c makes sense as a curve but the problem is uh, no there's no problem this is right seems right and d uh you have increased the temperature but activation energy is also increased so that is not something a catalyst does methanol can be produced from hydrogen carbon monoxide What's the expression for Kp? This is pretty simple. Go on, do it. So is it C? Yes, it is C. So the square on hydrogen is important. Another thing that's important is that we need to have uh, reactants in the new denominator and products in the numerator. Okay, the rest of the questions are just like this one. Uh, let's look at this one. oxidation of ethane dioate ions by acid by manganese 7 is very slow at room temperature okay so from the equation how do you know that it is acidified there is this portion of h positive being added to it and that tells us that this is acidified mn plus 2 ion catalyzes this reaction so we're using manganese to produce mn plus 2 ions which graph shows how the concentration of manganese 7 varies after ethane dioate ions are added so what's going to happen to the concentration of manganate because the more ethane dioate ions react the more manganate also moves forward and creates manganese plus 2 ions so the more mn plus 2 is made the faster this reaction is so what would be the curve so i don't understand the question so the question is saying you have ethane dioate ion ethane dioate ion is uh, this one and it is as it is oxidized by manganate seven which is this one now they're saying that this is very slow manganese plus 2 ion which is this one catalyzes this reaction turns out this catalyst is actually produced when this reaction happens which means the more the reaction happens the faster the reaction happens because the more the reaction happens the more catalyst you make the more catalyst you have the faster the reaction happens like not really all the time you need a certain amount of catalyst to react but yahan par you are creating more catalyst you are increasing the rate so the rate is going to be much higher and higher and higher ultimately you are going to run out of manganate and dioate pile somehow so they're saying what is the concentration of manganate how does it change so here's the thing manganate is being used up as the reaction goes forward and we are saying that the reaction will speed up as we move forward so it could be b or it could be c because concentration is going to fall down you're going to use a manganate but what's happening here the rate is like this the rate is increasing sure and then the rate decreases and i don't understand why this this have to be like this i don't understand this like you are making more catalyst and the catalyst the more you get it does not really change the rate as much catalyst aa gaya bas theek hai usne catalysis kar dena hai so i don't see why this reaction will alter like that and why its rate will decrease in this fashion so i don't think b is possible because of that so the answer will be c for two reasons one the concentration has to decrease because as the reaction progresses manganate is going to be used up so i'm going to get a fall in concentration of manganate but how would that fall occur the soon the sooner i get a catalyst the faster the rate but then that rate once the catalyst is done wo rate uski wajah se jitna kam hona tha ho gaya catalyst is not going to uh, dynamically alter the rate usne ek dafa kam kar diya bas kar diya after that the primary factor is still concentration so as the concentration decreases the rate eventually decreases so ye jo shuru wala fall aaya that is because of presence of catalyst and after that it decreases like that as a trend because there is a decrease in concentration the lower the concentration the slower the rate do you understand this why it can't be b do you get that 
Sorry, I still don't understand. Okay, I'll try to explain again. So one thing, concentration has to decrease as the reaction happens. So it can't be A, it can't be D. Second thing, catalyst provides an alternative pathway. So the effect of catalyst does not slowly change. Catalyst aagya, alternate pathway mil gaya. Now everything is going to have the same impact. That impact is not going to be slower and gradual, which means what is happening here is this slower and gradual thing. That's not going to happen. Number three, concentration plays a role as the concentration decreases. So does the rate here. The concentration is decreasing, but rate is increasing for this portion. So I don't get it. Why is that happening? Which is why I chose C. This fall in the rate, uh, this is increase in the rate is because of the catalyst. So catalyst is responsible for this. And then the slower and gradual decrease, a con constant trend is because of decrease in concentration. And both of those are true. Catalyst lowers the activation energy increases the rate right away, which happened here. And then as concentration decreases, so does the rate, which is happening overall. So this is unaccounted for in B. Uh, the rest of it is basically O levels knowledge that you need. Uh, these are also pretty simple. I tried a few of them. Let's do theory questions. All right. So the first question is uh, we have to figure out delta H. Okay. Delta H is all about uh, these molecules breaking down and forming. So remember one thing delta H is energy of bonds made or oh, sorry, broken. That is positive. That's the one you have to provide minus energy of bonds made. Okay. Which is exothermic. So let's go with that energy of bonds broken. That is HBR. And we're breaking two of them minus energy of bonds made. That is hydrogen and hydrogen bond and bromine and bromine bond. So based on that, we can just plug in the values. Notice that I only have to multiply 436 by two. Uh, which is not the value, this should be 366. Yeah, 366. So you solve it and you get 103 kilojoules per mole. So that's the molar enthalpy. Enthalpy has to be molar. Enthalpy is energy per unit mole. At the temperature of 700 K, a sample of HBR is approximately 10% decomposed. Okay. Change the temperature affects both the rate and the percentage that decomposes. So both the yield and the rate. 700 value is shown using the same sketch sketch as to show the curve at a high temperature. So they haven't specified what temperature because you really don't have any way of knowing the exact points. But at higher temperature, first thing starts at zero zero. Second thing touches the curve at only one point, remains low, ends higher. And the top goes down. So these are the four factors you have to remember. One starts at zero, zero, touches only at one point. The top is lower, ends up higher. Okay. So that is what happens at higher temperature. Maybe that's the question. Now we're 400. Maybe we're going to do this. Starts at zero, zero, touches higher. And it's like, yes, it's made. Stay explain the effect of increasing temperature on the rate of production of ammonia. So refer to this one. So you have to refer to this one, which means that you have to talk about particles on the right side of the actuation energy. So we'll say that uh, there are more particles at or above the same actuation energy, uh, which means there is more successful collisions per unit time. So the idea of time is also important. Okay. And secondly, uh, not only will the collisions be uh, more, they will also be more energetic because these particles on this side they have energy that is greater than activation energy. So that extra energy is also going to help them collide more forcefully or more energetically. So the rate of reaction is faster. Shader explained the effect of increasing temperature on the yield. So yield decreases because you're increasing temperature. Equilibrium goes to the side that has decreasing temperature, endothermic side, endothermic side. And uh, uh, that is why the yield decreases. Equilibrium favors the side that is endothermic to absorb that extra energy that you have. Uh, what's happening here? So first reaction is easy. You have enthalpy change of formation. 
we have to use the overall enthalpy of the reaction. So, because if you think about it, formation of chlorine and oxygen, both, both are zero. They are both elements, so you don't know to zero. Is. And that leaves us just with this one and this one. Uh, I think we will have two times water and uh, four times HCl on dono ko add kar denge. Minus kar denge. And we will get a simple value. So I think 242 times 2 minus 242 plus minus 4 times minus 92. Okay. And that gives me a value. State the type of catalyst used. So there are two types of catalysts. There's a homogeneous and there's the heterogeneous. Homogeneous is the one that's in the same state as reactant. Reactants are gases, but my catalyst is copper two chloride, which is ionic compound, which is solid. So it is heterogeneous. Okay, so I've done, I've stated it. So when they say state it, you just have to give one word, two word answer. You don't really have to write a full sentence or give a reason. Explain how a catalyst is able to increase the rate of chemical reaction. It's the oldest question in the book. Uh, you just say that it increase, it decreases the actual energy, which means more molecules are colliding per unit time successfully, or more molecules have more energy than actual energy. You don't talk about that it increase, gives a different pathway, which has lower actual energy. You're not really telling me how that increases the rate. You're, the real reason comes from, because of the lower energy, lower actuation energy, more particles are able to collide successfully uh, as far as rate is concerned. State the effect of catalyst on this reaction, on any reaction, yeah. explain how catalyst causes this effect. Again, it's the same thing. Catalyst feeds up a chemical reaction. That's the first part of the question. Uh, explain how catalyst does it. it produce, provides a different pathway with activation energy that is lower than the previous one, which means more particles have enough energy to react. State the meaning of the term heterogeneous. Uh, catalyst that is uh, in a different state or phase. The better word would be phase than the reactors. Okay. So we can use that. Okay. Explain why increasing the, sorry, I'm reading just the question part. Uh, explain why increasing the total pressure, constant temperature, constant temperature, increasing pressure, increases the rate of production. Of Again, any reaction that you see, uski equations will have portions of it that are relevant to every factor. If you talk about any chemical reaction, you can strip it of the important parts. So when it comes to temperature, the only thing that matters is this one. I don't need to look at the equation. Jo marzi o equation, this is what matters. When I talk about pressure, the only thing that matters is the number of gaseous moles. So I just look at the equation. My equation suddenly simplifies to this one. As far as I'm talking about pressure, I don't need to know what the thing is. I just look at these two numbers and I know my answer right away. And thirdly, concentration, my equation is this. These three ways of simplified information tell me how to answer the question. So in this case, they're increasing the pressure. So I just need to look at this one. And I know right away that I have less gaseous moles on the right side, which means according to LCP, equilibrium drives the reaction forward, which means my yield increases. But rate also increases because the more pressure you have, the more particles are like, basically, how does this happen? So students sometimes find it difficult to explain the effect of pressure. So if you increase pressure, Boyle's law tells me volume decreases. Notice that they're saying temperature does not decrease in this case. So a volume decreases, obviously. So if the particles are close, that means their concentration increases, but you have, don't have to talk about it, okay? But technically it's their concentration that's increasing, which means they will collide more per unit time and react more. But you can just say that at higher pressure particles have particles close, uh, come close to each other. You don't have to say particles have a lower volume because particles volume is fixed. It is the overall substance that has a lower volume. Okay. So they collide more frequently. So whenever they ask about explain, you have to give a reason and reasons always come from the particle level. The substances may have a reduced volume. Substances may have increased pressure, but the reason comes from what's happening at the particle level. So what's happening here? These are all flat lines because they have reached equilibrium. 
this is where the reach equilibrium. And notice that concentrations don't have to be the same, but the rate have has to be the same. Uh, sorry, rate doesn't have to be the same. The change has to be the same. There's no change happening. Iski concentration kuch hai, uski concentration kuch hai, but they all have one thing in common. They are not changing. And that is how I know it's equilibrium. Explain why the gradient of SO2 and O2 decrease with time. Because they're used up. As they're used up, there's lower concentration now. So as the reaction proceeds, they're used up. So the concentration decreases. Why do they become horizontal? Because the concentration stops changing. Equilibrium Suggest the reason why initial gradient of SO2 is steeper than that of O2. Uh, let's look at. Okay, so for this one, we'll look at the equation. And there it is. There is more SO2 being used up than oxygen. So the rate of using SO2 is double than oxygen. The ratio is two to one. And that's why you use more SO2 compared to oxygen. So obviously it decreases faster. SO2 is used up faster than that one. So they take overall four uh, worksheets here. We have done questions that belong to three of them. Uh, in the last one, there is a couple of questions about uh, nitric acid, joke, which come from uh, uh, redox. So if you want help in that, I can definitely do that later on. But the rest of it, you should be able to do as long as as, as long as the questions are kinetics. Uh, 